cold open, more like hot open because we're in Miami. Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amin Al Hassan. That in New York City is Charlotte Wilder, and this is Casual Tuesdays. Well, it was supposed to be formal news Tuesdays, but Amin, who always makes a big deal about me wearing a blazer, isn't wearing a blazer. Well, not even I'm wearing a hoodie, which to be honest, a lot more versatile and stylish an option than a blazer. Okay, you're the one who made me put my blazer on. Put a hoodie on. I don't know. Headlines okay. first. Well, folks, it's a points bonanza in the NBA. Friday night, days after Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns did it, Luka Doncic and Devin Booker became the fifth pair of players to score 60 plus on the same day. Luca unleashed 73 points on the Hawks in the Mavs 148 to 143 win. Devin Booker had 62 in the Suns 131 to 133 loss to the Pacers. Uh, my favorite part about this entire situation is that Grant Williams uh, of the Mavs took this as an opportunity to troll Nicholas Batum of the Sixers. Uh, when he tried to congratulate Joel Embiid for having a 70-point game and got the point total wrong. You know what? What's a couple of points between friends? I know. know. I was like, sure, 75. Why not? Also, I'd like to point out that in a bet the show segment earlier this season, I correctly predicted that there would be multiple 70-point games uh, happening this season. And not only did they happen, but they happened within like 24 hours of one another. So, wow, you know, a little, yeah. Ben Fair, yeah, okay. Amin, uh, Amin Stradamus over here. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Ooh, uh, yay, uh, good yeah, job. Ah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> what more? More like Philadelphia seventy fivers. Am I right? <laughs> According to Nicholas Batum, maybe. <laughs> Some people though, are not happy with all these historical scoring bursts. Noted grump, <laughs> Steve Kerr said, quote, I wish I could tell you the number of times a player wildly drove into us, ran into us, and I went to the ref and the ref used the expression illegal guarding position. The way we're interpreting the rules is favoring the offense. I wanted to stop here and just ask everybody, imagine that statement being said without the context of basketball. The number of times a guy wildly drove into us and ran into us. No, a, a player. It's like a uh, number of times this guy who's bad to women drove into us. Oh, yeah. Wildly. Player. Yeah. No, it sounds, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like Rush Hour in Miami. Very good. Cool. On Saturday night, the San Antonio Spurs defeated the Minnesota Timberwolves in a 113 to 112 thriller behind 23 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists from Victor Wembanyama. Meanwhile, on Sunday, Jalen Duran of the Pistons had 22 points and a career-high 21 rebounds as Detroit ended Oklahoma City's five-game winning streak with a 120-104 to victory of their own. You know what? F- 70-point games on the same day. How about the Spurs and the Pistons winning on back-to-back nights? It's like pigs flying, I mean. Oh, man. For the math nerds out there like you, Charlotte, I know you're so <laughs> Oh, yeah, love it. Numbers. Love yeah. math. That means... 12.5% of both the Spurs and Pistons combined wins together occurred within 36 hours of one another. Oh. Yeah. How about that? Shout out to the 6 and 40 Pistons. Just want everyone out there to know I tried to come up with a joke about Pistons 640 sounding like a car engine. Didn't work. We scrapped it. I'm telling you yeah. now. Anyway. Okay. There was um, also an attendance joke that happened. Yeah, that was how many people were were at the game? But. You know, folks, much like, much like the Pistons, you can't win them all. <laughs> In fact, you lose most of them. <laughs> In fact, like a lot of the time you lose. Damian Lillard became the latest Bucks player to back new Bucks head coach Doc Rivers. Lillard said, "There's nothing he hasn't experienced, and I just think his voice, how he's able to motivate teams. He's a strong voice, and he's going to demand more from our team." I mean, I, I got to say, Dame, thank you so much. It is a strong voice. Um, and I try to use it in as a motivating a way as possible. Now, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes we're up 3-1 and we end up losing. And, you know, you can't put that all on my voice. It's not my voice's fault. 
It's not. But Dame, thanks for the, the words of support. As Amin El Hassan once said, it's hard to go up 3 1 in the first place. Absolutely. And Amin El Hassan, what a handsome, well dressed, <laughs> uh, intelligent basketball analyst. Okay. <laughs> The Knicks' Julius Randle is expected to miss weeks rather than months with a dislocated right shoulder after colliding with the Heat's Jaime Jaquez over the weekend. Quote, You knew for him to do that, it might be serious, Coach Sean Thibodeau told reporters. He's a guy who plays through things, and that's what you love about him. He's a warrior. Do you think, is this Tibbs' passive-aggressive way of telling Julius he's been traded? Ha! He's not a warrior, Tibbs, he's a Nick. In other news, if you're wondering who should be the villain in the next John Wick movie, look no further. You get the slow-mo video of Nikola Jokic arriving for the game and looking looking like a hitman, I guess, from a John Wick movie. I, don't yeah. know, I feel like I feel like we're, we're typecasting here. Is there anything else that he looks like? Yeah, I think he looks like uh, a private equity guy heading to the office right after he successfully laid off a bunch of journalists. I think he looks like a mid '90s kind of uh, international playboy showing up to, and he's he's kind of dapping up the valet guy or whatever, letting him know, "Yeah, I'm here, and I'm on the prowl." He looks like he could be Leonardo DiCaprio's security guard who goes along with him on those playboy trips. He looks he looks like he's late for prom. Oh. He looks like he is the leader of a corporate training session that he takes very seriously and just thinks he totally nailed. Yeah, he looks like he's someone showing up late for a job that they don't like. Like he's kind of like the you see the look on his face like when he's about to clock in. Well, that could be true. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the plaintiff in a people's court case. He looks like a comedian who just really crushed his type five. He looks like an early 90s comedian who really crushed his tight five. There it is. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver is close to finalizing a deal that would extend him through the end of the decade, taking him through the 2029-2030 season. Adam Silver's current deal pays him at roughly $10 million annually, which sounds like a lot of money until you realize that Roger Goodell makes something like $50 million a year, and he's a complete f*** up. All right, Charlotte, so... Big game tonight, Pacers, Celtics. Tyrese Halliburton is expected to play tonight. He's missed 10 of the last 11 games due to a hamstring injury. Um, And there's obviously a lot of excitement. You know, the Pacers made a big deal to get Pascal Siakam. And so now this is a nice, you know, what they call measuring stick game. But I'm surprised at how many people are missing the point of all of this. What's the point? I mean, all right. So. The NBA has the 65-game rule that they instituted this year, right? It's kind of cracked down on guys resting, yeah. and so we're going to make them play, right? And we've heard a lot about that 65-game rule, haven't we, Charlotte? Yes, we've heard a this lot year. about it. We've even what, gone through it with a fine-tooth comb. Yes, and who have we gone through it about most of the time? Not just us, all the people talking. Uh, indeed. Yes, Embiid, Embiid, yeah. Embiid, Embiid. Embiid's MVP. Oh, he can't win MVP back-to-back. -back. He's missed this many games. Oh, my God, he's he's only got so many games left for before the 65-game threshold kicks in. And we went through it, like you said, with a fine-tooth comb and said, what are the caveats and mm -hmm. for 62 games? And all. and all along, we missed perhaps the biggest story in the entire league that no one is really talking about. As I said, Tyrese Halliburton has missed 10 of the last 11 games for the Pacers. 10 of 11 because he tried to make a comeback against the Blazers a few games ago mm -hmm. and then had to nix it and sit back out and miss a bunch of games after that. So it was clear he wasn't ready and he wasn't healthy. Why would Terry's Halliburton come back for that game when he wasn't 100%? And the reason is because Tyrese Halliburton has now missed 13 of the allowable 17 games you have for that 65 game threshold. What does oh. that mean? What does that mean? It means that Tyrese Halliburton, if he misses 18 games, will not be eligible for all NBA honors. Something that I think we can all agree if, if he's healthy and eligible, he will be an all NBA player because he's been phenomenal, right? 
Right. Now, here's where it's a big difference. If Joel Embiid misses 18 games, yes, he doesn't get to be MVP for a second straight season. Yes, his ego may take a hit in that way. But financially, his contract does not change. The game check he would have gotten as an MVP is no different than the game check he'd, he'd get as not winning an MVP. Right. The incentives are not, he doesn't have the incentives yeah. in his contract. And if you look at the list of players, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, guys who are either flirting with that threshold or have passed it and, and are not going to catch it. Again, financially, no one is made unwhole by the 65 game rule. But Tyrese Halliburton doesn't have that luxury. He signed his rookie scale agreement prior to the season, right? It kicks in next year. The actual amount on the contract is $205.9 million. Except if he reaches certain thresholds, like winning MVP or being all NBA. And by oh. being all NBA... That contract goes from $205.9 million to $247 million. So his starting salary next year, instead of being $35.5 million, starts at $42.6 million. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm telling you is for Tyrese Halliburton, it is very literally worth 40 extra million dollars to him. I got to be able to be eligible for this so I can make this extra money. And in that same vein, he ends up getting hurt again and has to sit out longer. The 65 game rule not only is making it so that we have this silly kind of threshold for all these guys, but in a very real way, it impacted negatively the Pacers season and Tyrese Halliburton season because he rushed back from an injury he shouldn't have rushed back for and got hurt in the process, all because he wants to be eligible for those $40 million. Well, this is something, I mean, you talked about this when this first came up with Embiid, where it's like, this is a self-selecting process. If he had missed enough games to where the voters were like, okay, he shouldn't, he, he didn't earn MVP in the way that he needed to, given how much he played. Alternatively, he did still earn that with how much he played. Like it's a, it's a, it's a sliding scale, a subjective thing. And it almost acts as this like guillotine hanging over people's seasons as a, a number 65. What if he, what if you play 64? What if you play yeah. 63? Like it, 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 those, that harsh threshold for something that affects people so concretely and then, and then probably inspires more injury. Do you think they're going to revisit this? Like, do you think this is something that sticks around next year? I understand wanting star players to play, load management, blah, 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 blah. But it just seems totally ass backwards. Absolutely, Charlotte. So here are the guys that are ineligible. Kyrie Irving, Bradley Beal, LaMelo Ball, and John Morant. Of those four guys... The only ones financially impacted by this would be LaMelo Ball, who has the same clause in his contract that Tyrese Halliburton has. Difference is, LaMelo Ball could have played every game. He wasn't going to be all NBA. He wasn't going to be defensive player of the year. He was going to be MVP. So it really didn't apply to him. Furthermore, the guys who are close to that threshold, Jimmy Butler with 15 games missed out of a allowable 17, Kristaps Porzingis with 12, Joel Embiid with 11, Bam Adebayo with 10, Devin Booker with 9, Donovan Mitchell with 9, Kevin Durant with 7. None of those guys have anything riding on it. Literally, the only person this rule is going to is seems destined to screw over is Tyrese Halliburton, which is so anti what we've all been feeling as a basketball community this whole yeah. season. What a great story. What a great find for Indiana. Oh, and the All-Star game's there, and he's going to start. What a great like vision of the future. And we're going to ruin it all because of this silly little rule that never addressed the problem to begin with because players do not control when they play or don't play. Teams do. And you know who has a vested interest to not want to pay Tyrese Halliburton more money? The team. The team. It's just so, it's the NBA shooting itself in the foot. When I hear like 16 games you're allowed to miss, I mean 17 games you're allowed mm -hmm. to miss, it just reminds me of like someone taking attendance of this like punitive, yeah. we don't trust you vibe. That's what it is. It's like, we don't trust that you want the best for yourself in a lot of ways. And we don't trust that you can't control what happens to you. That's the thing. It's like, do, they, do, do the people who made this rule think that 
that you can decide whether to be injured and whether your body will come back. It's this, it's this weird stuff the NBA is pushing with those studies that came out where they were like, you don't get hurt more if you play more. It, 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 this, it's like this pseudoscience mixed with arbitrary numbers that are only hurting the league because if Tyrese Halliburton is all NBA, if he continues to succeed, that is only good for the future of it. So I'll take it a step further, right? Uh, my buddy Tom Havistro was uh, telling me he was watching the Today Show uh, the other day. And, uh, you know, the Today Show is a morning show. They do morning show topics. They rarely talk about sports. When they do talk about sports, it's almost never NBA basketball. Mm -hmm. But on the Today Show the other day, they said, oh, and Joel Embiid scored 70 points in the game. And everyone was like, wow, that's pretty amazing. And he was the MVP of the league, and he scored 70 points. That's, that's an incredible feat. And then someone brought up the fact that it, it's in question whether he'll be eligible to win MVP this year. And one of the other hosts said, what do you mean? What do you mean whether he's eligible? He's clearly a great player. Why wouldn't he be eligible? And they start trying to explain the 65-game rule. And anytime you have to explain to the lay people – something like that. It's just, it's so silly. It's so silly and so dumb. And it does a poor job of reflecting on the league. It brings highlights to people who otherwise would not know any better that, oh, our league has a quote unquote problem in the same way that when you test guys for marijuana, all that happens is you are advertising to people that we have players that use marijuana Mm -hmm. And makes it seem like we have a league of potheads. Whereas if you never tested for it, then no one would ever fail a test. No one would ever be put out there for being suspended for something that is not performance enhancing and isn't really a big issue, regardless of whether it's legal or illegal in your particular municipality. And it's all of these things where the NBA seems to have a bad habit of drawing negative attention to itself rather yeah. than just allowing for a system that has its own checks and balances, like we talked about, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. People weren't going to vote for him if he missed 20 games anyway. So why do you need a rule telling them that they can't? It's just so deflating. It's so deflating to be like, look at this amazing highlight, and then like, well, but here's a weird loophole that might screw him over. Good morning, America. Sorry, today. Hello, today. When I came into this NBA, there was two guys I was starstruck by. One was Kobe Bryant, and the other one was Grant Hill. I grew up in the state of Michigan, Grant Hill, Detroit Pistons. And so I wish that he would have just said that to me, you know, if, if, especially if you're going to say that publicly. And so it hurt me a little bit from a fan standpoint as well. I'm a big fan of Grant Hill. And if I got a call because some guys drop off that list that's just unforeseen, for whatever reasons, I'll be ready with my bags packed and go play in the third Olympics because I'm not too big to be second. So that was Draymond Green on the aptly named Draymond Green podcast presented by DraftKings. Shout out to DK. Talking about what executive director of Team USA Basketball Grant Hill said on the record to ESPN's Brian Winhurst. Charlotte, you have those quotes. I sure do. Uh, Grant Hill said this about Draymond Green. His contributions have been significant, and he is a real part of the legacy of this organization for his excellence. But I think just in lieu of sort of what's transpired this year, we made a decision not to have him on this list with this particular point in time with the process. We all understand and certainly have great respect and sensitivity to this particular period in his career, and he's working through some things both on and off the court. And so we at USA Basketball wanted to support him on his journey. And we just didn't feel that playing over the summer gives him the best opportunity to do what he needs to do. Now, I mean, this is a masterclass uh, in language because wow. we've talked about that. Yeah, it's beautiful. We talked about this when it happened. You know, Draymond chokes out Rudy Gobert and everyone's like, oh, what is Draymond's problem? He's got to get his together. And then he hits Nurkic across the face. And it was like the straw that broke the narrative's back <laughs> where everyone was suddenly like, oh, we hope he gets the help he needs. He needs he needs mental health help. He needs therapy. He And that, and that Grant Hill's like, he's on this journey and we want to support him. Um, it's, it, it's a masterclass. No, and this is what Grant Hill does best. He says the right thing and he says it the right way every single time. And, and what makes this story even funnier is that this comes on the heels of this past weekend on Saturday night. 
him slapping Anthony Davis in the face inadvertently and mm. Jared Vanderbilt of the Lakers calling for a review so they could upgrade it to a flagrant foul and Draymond in the most unhinged fashion possible mocking the review call of Vanderbilt. Yeah, like a little kid. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it made me laugh so hard because yeah. it's funny looking for one, but for two, it's like, you're under the spotlight, my man. You're under the microscope. This is exactly the type of unhinged behavior you can't do. You could just say, hey, man, that ain't no flagrant. Stop, stop, you know, stop lying yeah. or whatever. Stop, stop whining. You don't have to go that far into it. And it made me think maybe, maybe a little bit more sessions, maybe yeah. a couple more sessions. I don't know, though. It's tough because he's such a performer. It's so fun. I like, I know, I know hilarious. that we're not supposed to want this. I know that we're supposed to be like, okay, Draymond, like, get your act together, blah, blah, blah. But it is just one of my favorite things to watch. And I think part of it is like, it. it part of it is, it's very hard to make someone who's played basketball a certain way his whole life mm -hmm. at Draymond's age completely change. You said this on um, Lebetard one day that I think about a lot, actually, where you said it's like telling someone be like 90 percent yourself and then take that 10 percent off. It's like, how do you how do you do that? But also it makes me it's why Draymond is such a good podcaster. It's why he's <laughs> so good when he fills in on broadcast. He's a performer. He He wants to entertain. And unfortunately, he does it very, very well. Yeah, I mean, it is entertaining. By the way, the other thing that made me laugh a lot about that that clip that we played at the beginning mm -hmm. is he's talking about this. And for the audio audience, I'm going to <laughs> describe to you what he's wearing. <laughs> he's wearing a Team USA, like, warm-up shooting shirt. The only way it could have been funnier is if he also wore the gold medal with it while he's talking about this. Well, if if we know Draymond, he will probably do another episode on this, and maybe he'll add the medal then. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you a question, yeah. though. Does he have a point? His point I, is, his point is, I can respect that that's the reason why I'm not on the list. But Grant Hill, if you felt comfortable enough to say it on the record, could you not have told that to me personally first, as yeah. you told me I'm not on the list? I think so. I think he is a very real point. I think especially because he's been such a part of that program. Also, he said he really wants to play. And I yeah. think that this is coming off of a time where not everybody wanted to play. And so it sort of bums me out a little bit for Draymond. I know that he's done a lot of this to himself, but yeah. I, it's sort of like, man, let Draymond play in the Olympics. <laughs> Am well, I, I crazy? Let Draymond be, play in the Olympics. To be fair, Grant Hill's comments didn't seem like an open shut case. He kind of left the door open that maybe something could happen. And Draymond himself said, look, I know how it is. People are on the list and then they drop out for whatever reason. And whenever mm -hmm. that time comes and, and they call me, I'll be ready. And I'm not going to have hard feelings about it. I, I want to do this. So I think I think there is still an opportunity for this to all work itself out. Mm -hmm. But I do think Draymond's right that Grant Hill owes him at least a phone call to let yeah. him know, hey, this is the reason why we're not leaving you. We're not putting you on that list. And like Draymond Green, I too, I haven't been starstruck many times in my job. I was very starstruck the first day I met Grant Hill when he showed up to practice in Phoenix. And uh, and he asked me to rebound for him. And like, oh. look, I, I, Grant Hill was my favorite player growing up. So that was that was definitely like a moment of like, oh, snap, I'm rebounding. I'm rebounding for Grant Hill. And so I know what Draymond is saying and meaning when he says those words. And you know that I obviously have a lot of love and respect for Grant Hill. I say all the time I wouldn't have my job in the media if it weren't for people like Grant Hill and Steve Nash and Shaquille O'Neal and, uh, you know, Amari Stoudemire, all those guys, I got to be around their success and their mm -hmm. exploits. And I got to kind of absorb some of their stories. So like, I am very, very protective of my guys, so to speak. Having said that, yeah, I think he could have, he could have told Draymond that at least one-on-one -on -one before divulging that on the record to, to Brian Winhurst. Well, maybe, maybe he'll go on Draymond's podcast. Yeah, maybe. And then and then and then Grant Hill say, I brought you something, by the way. And he pulls out a Team USA jersey. <gasps> oh, oh, you're going to Paris. Yeah. Collarbones are hot. Huh. Oh, we went out to dinner this weekend and I was so embarrassing by accident. I they brought any people on their collarbones. No, no, no. Oh. Although that is something I would do. They brought the check and I went, thank you. Thank you. And Tyler was like, what? 
Why? He was like, are you on a game show? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. It just happened. 